Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be looking at heat and the first law of thermodynamics. So before we can talk about heat, we have to define heat. So what exactly is heat? And again, this kind of sounds arbitrary and a little bit simplified, um, but the idea is that heat is a transfer of energy. And in order for there to be heat, you have to have two objects that have different temperatures. So the driving force, if you want to think about it like that, of heat is the fact that if you have two objects that have different temperatures, there is going to be a transfer of energy between them. And so uh, heat is always uh, flowing, and it only flows from a hot object to a colder object. So if you are, you know, I don't know, let's say you're outside, the outside temperature is 98 degrees um, and you are internally, at least, I don't know externally what you are, but internally, you know, you're 98.6 degrees. That is a temperature difference. And so even a point something or a point zero 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 one, um, unless you are the exact same temperature, there's going to be heat. Okay. Heat is going to be transferred either from you to the, uh, surroundings to the outside, or it's going to be transferred from the surroundings. If the surroundings are warmer to you and warm you up. So what are the forms of heat? Well, the first is conduction. Conduction is a form of heat where you're transferring heat between two objects that are directly touching one another. Good examples of that. If you've ever you know, grilled food before, those grill marks are caused by conduction. It's because you have hot metal, you have a cooler or you know, cold uh, meat or vegetables, and those little lines are showing where the heat was transferred because they were in direct contact. Uh, if you've ever ironed a shirt before, that's conduction. You have a hot piece of metal and you have a cool or room temperature piece of cloth. Um, shared body warmth. If you know you hug somebody and they feel warm to you, that's because they are transferring their warmth from themselves to you. So here's conduction, right? You have this uh, warm uh, piece of metal and this person's holding it. And so that's going to be transferred from the metal to the hand. Convection. Convection is when heat is transferred between currents in liquids or gases. So it's not conduction, but it is its kind of own little form uh, that's specialized. So conduction happens between solids. Convection happens between, you know, solids and possibly liquids, or liquids and gases, or gases and solids, and you know, things like that. So it's heating or cooling air or water. So you can think about it like in the ocean. Uh, the temperature of the water increases if it is warm outside. And that's because there is a flow of energy from the warmth in the air to the uh, you know kind of coolness of the ocean. Uh, but eventually, it will warm up as a result of that. Or like it says, the atmosphere. You know, cold fronts and a uh, warm front. So here's one where you have cool air falling and warm air rising, and so you get this cycle. And so this is a uh, land breeze. And then last but not least, we have radiation. Radiation is just any form of electromagnetic radiation, right? So in other words, all the stuff we talked about in the first semester, it's you know, light, ultraviolet light, x-rays, nuclear decay, microwaves, radio waves, infrared, all those things. And so the easiest one for that is just the sun releasing radiation that is you know, heating up the earth, okay? But it's traveling in the vacuum of space from the sun to the earth. All right, and so again, Hot to cold, always. The heat is always going to flow from hot to cold. You can't go backwards. And conduction, convection, and radiation are the three methods that heat flows through. So what exactly is happening at the molecular level? Well, the hotter the temperature, the more kinetic energy the particles have. So things are moving faster, the hotter it is. And that kind of makes sense. So you can see that at 100K, you have a great number of particles that are pretty much like, you know, about this speed, whatever this speed is, right, right about here. But if you increase that by tenfold, it looks like, hey, look, it looks like it's going slower. But no, think about this, right? This is the peak. So these molecules are moving that much faster. So compare, you know, this kind of area here where it's this speed to this here. Things are moving faster as a result. Now, the particles that we're looking at, we call those the system, and everything else is the surroundings. And it's up to you to determine your system unless it's given to you in a question, right? So if you're looking at a candle burning, you can say, okay, the system that I'm looking at is the wick and the candle and the flame. 
The surroundings are everything except for that. So you can picture the room that it's in or, uh, you know, the house that it's in or the state the house is in or, you know, the country the house is in or the entire earth or the entire universe. The system is all we care about. The surroundings are everything else. So what's the first law state? Well, first let's define energy. So energy is the ability for a system to perform work and it's measured in joules or kilojoules. So joule is kind of the official unit of energy. And so kilojoules is just a thousand joules, right? Kilo, kilo meaning a thousand. What is the first law state? Energy can't be created or destroyed, it merely changes form. In other words, in order to heat something up, it requires energy. Okay, and that energy is going to be going from one location to another location. It's going to be going from the system to the surroundings or from the surroundings to the system. It's sometimes called the law of conservation of energy, and that means that the energy of the universe is always the same. Okay, if it can't be created or destroyed, there is a finite amount of energy in the universe, and all it's doing is moving from one location to another location. So you can kind of think about it like this if we're looking at the energy of the universe, if you add up the energy of the surroundings plus the energy of your system, that always will add up to the energy that the universe has. Okay, And again, that just makes sense. Remember, the system's all we care about. The surroundings, everything else. Okay, The entirety of the universe except for the system that you are looking at. Even if it's something as simple as a candle burning, the surroundings are everything else in the universe that is not that candle burning.